Rachels. Welcome to another training video put on by the Trelawney 4-H Club. Today, we're going to be teaching you how to make sorrel wine. Yes, we're in the festive season and I know sorrel is just one of those drinks that we have to have. So today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make sorrel wine. Some of the things that you'll need, of course, is a container in which you'll put your wine. You'll need the sorrel, you'll need some yeast for fermentation, you'll need some sugar, you'll need some orange peel, ginger, raisins, cinnamon stick, and of course, I add a little clove. Now, some of these are optional. You don't have to have it. But guess what? I like my wine very fruity. Hence, all of these. You also need some water that has been boiled all right so the first thing we're going to do we're going to pour our sorrel into our container all right so these were washed and of course we looked for the ones that were good and we took them out next we are going to be adding our raisins Then we're going to be adding our orange peel, and that can be either dried or fresh, and that will give you the zest, so you'll have a nice little taste. And you're all, we're also going to be adding some shredded ginger, that again is for flavor. We will now add a few sticks of cinnamon. Again, I told you it's a fruity, sorry, wine. Then we are going to add our sugar. All right, pouring the sugar. After which we are going to be adding our water that has been boiled. So the steam coming out. And of course, we want to add enough water, right? So we have added our water. I want to ensure that we have added at least four quarts, all right? Then we are going to stir. Uh, we have added our cinnamon sticks, our orange peel, our sugar, cloves, raisins. Then we are giving it, and the sugar, then we are giving it that thorough stir. All right, whoa, the aroma is so nice. I can just imagine when it is finished. All right, so now what you would do, you would add the yeast for the yeast to act with the sugar to ferment so we can get the wine. But because the water is really hot, you wouldn't add it to this. You would wait like six hours or overnight or until it is cool to room temperature before you add your yeast. So what I have done, what I have done Wait. is I have gone ahead to prepare one batch. Good. And this batch and the container, you notice it is airtight. Good. Good. So we have gone ahead to prepare one batch so we could add the yeast. And you can come a little closer to look at what is that in there. Yes. Nice and rich. So we are going to add the yeast to this one. All right. So here we have our yeast. And we have a little sugar that we're going to be mixing with it. And of course, we're going to mix the yeast and the sugar together. And we're going to use some lukewarm water to mix it. Why we use lukewarm water is because we want the yeast to be activated and if the water is too hot, it will kill the yeast. So there you see, wow. So we are combining our sugar, the yeast, and the lukewarm water. All right, yes. So while we're doing all of this, we are now going to add our yeast to the batch that was already prepared. The 
we have added that, then we are going to give it a nice stir to combine the yeast with the mixture that is there, the soil mixture, so it can continue the fermentation process. Now, after you have done this, you will cover the container. And again, my container is airtight, so you cover it. And you will rest it in a cool place for about two weeks after which you will strain and then from there you're going to set it aside and you will continue to strain to ensure that you get rid of all the settlement after that your wine is ready to drink i tell you what it is something that you can share with your neighbors and the good thing about sorrel is that sorrel is now available all year round so this doesn't have to be a Christmas drink. It can be something that you can have and enjoy with your family and friends all year round. Again, I want to thank you for joining the 4-H Club for another training video. Thank you.